the first communication that we had was an email from you that came to me and I thought, <laughs> a rabbi, a rabbi sent me an email and you invited us to your home, <laughs> which was so odd because no, but nobody's ever reached out to us like that. And we've, you know, been involved with, there's been opportunities, we can put it that way. And so, um, of course, we accepted and went to your home and had not having had met you all. And it could not have been a more warm, uh, inviting, comfortable, and very enjoyable evening. It was a lot about, you know, in the 60s and 70s, it was really a lot about assimilation and so forth. Uh, we uh, um, I have three other siblings. We all uh, went to uh, Beth Israel. We were affiliated with Beth Israel, Sunday school and Hebrew school and, and bar and bat mitzvahs and, and so forth. My, uh, my grandparents, my father's parents uh, were here in Houston. After uh, my bar mitzvah, uh, again, I was uh, kind of, I guess, allowed the freedom to uh, pursue uh, either, you know, further Jewish studies or not, and uh, I, I did, I did not. I chose really not to. My mother's father and his brothers escaped from Russia, and um, ultimately they ended up in El Paso, and so they were very proud of being Jewish and. My grandmother was really, I think my grandmother and um, my grandfather were the ones who really instilled the traditions that we had growing up, having Passover at my grandmother's house, her matzo ball soup, her chopped liver. When I left El Paso, I went to the University of Texas and didn't know anybody there. If I met somebody who found out that I was Jewish and they were Jewish, there was an instant connection and always an invitation to somebody's home for the high holidays if I didn't have anything going on. So I had uh, traveled to Israel for the first time and I was, I was very fortunate uh, to, to be invited to the home of a young couple. And that's kind of where I, I saw how much, and I really learned how much uh, the, the, they really look forward to Shabbat, to Friday night as a family. So when I got back here in the States, you know, we, we had talked about it. We really started to say, said, let's really do this. Let's try, especially now we have kids, let's try to do this. Let's light the candles and, and celebrate Shabbat. For me, it's the carrying on the tradition that I grew up with, having the family together and sitting around and having a meal together and the kids playing together and having my house smell like when I would walk into my Mimi's house for Passover. So Passover, having the family together here, Hanukkah, making the lakis, and having a Hanukkah party, if you will. And um, for me, that's that's a high point for me because it brings up very fond memories of growing up. You know, you always want your your children to enjoy a higher standard of living than you did. Uh, you know, I think that is, is really what I, I feel like I want them to, um, to, to, to have a, a, a uh, a more uh, Jewish education uh, and observance than I had uh, growing up. Efforts made to make it such a fun and fulfilling experience for the kids. Esty truly cares about these kids and their experience that they have when they go to Sunday school, so much so that I get a phone call and follow-ups and, you know, I mean, it's, it's genuine. Yeah, I really appreciate uh, the Shul of Bel Air uh, for their values, uh, for the, you know, it's because it's not about anything but bringing Jews together regardless of how observant they are, uh, how wealthy they are, how poor, it doesn't matter, it's just that they're Jewish. It's not easy being um, Jewish in Houston, Texas. It's so impressive to us, uh, and that's what makes it so special, is because it's so selfless. But we're <coughs> flattered, and we, we do appreciate it. Yes, we're very appreciative of it.